In example four, we're going to solve using the quadratic formula, and again, we're going to give an exact answer and an approximation to the nearest hundredth, if there is one. As I look at the problem, I have negative 3x squared plus 2x equal to negative 6. The first thing I should be thinking to myself, is this z equal to 0? I'm going to scroll up to the top real quick just to show you the quadratic formula. In the quadratic formula, in order to use it, we have to have ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. If it's not set equal to 0, we have to set it equal to 0 before we can get started. So let's go back to our example. And if we take a look at the right-hand side, we have a negative 6 over there instead of a 0. So we need to move that and get it out of there. To move it, all we have to do is just add 6 to both sides. And once we add 6 to both sides, taking a look at the left-hand side, we have an x squared term, an x term, and a constant. We can't combine anything together, so we're just going to rewrite it. This is negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 6 equal to 0, because on this right-hand side, negative 6 plus 6 is just 0. Next, we'll label our a, b, and c. a is always the number in front of our x squared, which is negative 3. b is always our number in front of x, so b is 2. c is always our constant. c, in this case, is 6. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find that discriminant so it can tell us what type of answers we're going to have. Our discriminant is b squared, so 2 squared, minus 4 times negative 3 times 6. So this was a and this was c. Plug this in your calculator. Again, always practice this. Make sure you're getting the right answer, that you're plugging it into your calculator correctly. And you should get a discriminant of 76. Now we're going to plug that information into our quadratic formula. So we have x equal to the opposite of b, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root. And remember, underneath that square root is our discriminant, the 76. It tells us that we do have real answers, but they're going to be irrational since 76 is not a perfect square. So we should have or expect a radical in our exact answer. And we should expect approximation. So let's put that 76 underneath here. And all of this is being divided by 2 times our a value, which is negative 3. So we get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 76, all divided by negative 6. Now we do need exact answers. And we need approximate answers. So we're going to find our approximate answers first by using this that we have right here. So approximate answers are going to be the easier ones because you don't have to simplify. So let's go off here right now and talk about approximate. Our approximate answers are going to come from negative 2 plus the square root of 76 divided by negative 6. And negative 2 plus the, oop, not plus, minus the square root of 76 over negative 6. And this is where I really need you to plug this in your calculator. You're going to plug in negative 2 plus the square root of 76, hit enter, and then do your division and divide by negative 6. So take a second, pause, and try that out. If you did the approximation correctly, you should get this to be approximately negative 1.12. And then we're going to try the other one. So now do the negative 2 minus the square root of 76 and divide that by negative 6. And you should get, if you round it correctly, 1.79. Those are our approximate answers. So our approximate answers are negative 1.12 and 1.79. Next, we'll go through how to find the exact answers. So that's a little bit different. We're going to come back here and go through how to find exact. To find the exact answers, this is where we have to use our skills of simplifying that square root, if it's possible. So we want to know, is there a perfect square that goes into 76 exactly? 
And the answer to that is yes, 76 is divisible by four. If you don't know what perfect squares go in it, take a list of your perfect squares and start dividing just like we did in the first day of the chapter. This ends up to be negative two plus or minus, and here's where we're breaking up the square root of 76. It's the square root of four times the square root of 19, all divided by negative six. So the only thing we did from here to here is we broke the square root of 76 down into a perfect square and something that's not. It won't always be able to do that. If you can't keep going, then this would be your exact answer. Next, what we're gonna do is we can evaluate the square root of four. So we have negative two plus or minus two square root of 19 all over negative six. Now with that, we have one more step. We are looking to see if we can simplify. In order to simplify, we are going to have to look at these three numbers, the negative two, the two, and the negative six. If all three of these numbers can be divisible or can be divided by the same number, we need to go ahead and make that simplification, which two, negative two, two, and negative six all are divisible by two. So we're gonna go ahead and divide, leaving us with negative two divided by two is negative one, this two divided by two is positive one, so we have plus or minus one square root of 19. And then negative six divided by two is negative three. If you can't divide all three of these, then you cannot simplify it. You must be able to do it to all three. So our exact answer that we would write on our line is negative one plus or minus the square root of 19 all over negative three. If you have questions, please let me know.